Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. Hi, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. This is episode one. We're yeah, we're really excited about that. Yeah, excited to have you guys here today. Um, you know, I want to tell you about us. We're going to talk about who we are and kind of go into some details of our background and how we wound up here and uh, how we've been able to reach our success and all that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're doing this show because a lot of people, I think, look at the lifestyle that we've created now and say to themselves, I'd love to have that. Can I actually do it? And I think that, you know, we are average people that just wanted something better for our family. And so that... Th- if we can do it, anybody can do it. So I think we want to share those journeys and share those tips and things that have helped us go to a different level in life and, and you know help you be able to reach your goals by saying, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. So we want to help you get to know us a little better so you know who we are. Yeah, I think sometimes people think that you know people are born with silver spoons in their mouth or they had real estate backgrounds or contractor backgrounds yeah. or whatever. And so they don't realize the potential of real estate and that it really is for everyday people. Yeah. And we were... <laughs> We, we were in a pretty bad way when we started. So yeah. it, it that's what we want to do is, is show other people that and really have the abundance mentality yeah. and, you know, anybody can do it. Um, we do want to tell you a little bit about ourselves first, though. Yep. So first, let me tell you that we are, our, what we have decided our slogan is, is helping everyday people build wealth through real estate investing or build every, every, helping every people create wealth through real estate investing. And so we really want to, to strive that. And today we're going to talk about a lot of different things uh, through the presentation. We're going to tell you about our stories. We're going to tell you about some things you can do at the end to kind of get going the right direction and maybe overcome some fears that you have before we wrap up today. So we'll, let me jump right in and kind of tell you about me. So I started my first business at 19 years old. As I'm sitting here today, I'm 50. I don't know where the time went, but I'm 50. I'm an old guy, I guess. So I'm 50 years old. And so I started my first business at 19. It was a security and alarm company. And I started that just uh, from scratch, didn't have any business experience. I uh, worked for uh, my brother, actually, in a company. And um, he actually had to fire me because I started my business alongside uh, that job. So that didn't... You were always an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I was. I've, I've always been, my whole life, I've always wanted to work for myself. I knew that at a young age. I just didn't know what or how it would play out. So I had that business for about 14 years. Um, uh, it, again, it was a security and alarm company, cameras, alarms, that kind of stuff. That put me in a tough situation, though, starting a business at a young age, because I actually went bankrupt three times in my early 20s. So I went bankrupt. Within a two-year span of time, I went bankrupt three different times uh, trying to (laughs) reclaim other debt that was out there, that kind of stuff. I had two foreclosures on houses that I bought, because I bought my first real estate course at 19 years old, thinking that was going to be my my key. I can remember actually being at the top. I don't think I ever told you there's a spot um, that we drive down the back roads, and there's a spot you can kind of oversee this oversee the city, and I thought, I'm going to own that city someday. You know, big dreams when you're 19 years old or whatever, 18, whatever I was. So I bought that first real estate course, and my dreams started to go crazy. And then life starts to kick you around a little bit, but um, I got excited about that and bought those first two houses, but I did lose them both in foreclosure because I didn't know that you should pay the mortgage, you know, so I wasn't very good at money management back then. Had a repossession, lost a vehicle in the middle of the night. I uh, was married at the time to my first wife, and uh, tough Tough. That was probably 19 to age 23, kind of in that in that range. Um, I actually then transferred into network marketing. So I was with two major network marketing companies for a total of about 10 years, and uh, through that process, I learned. Like I loved the network marketing industry because it was a it was a self improvement course. I was paid to take, so I was building my own business. But for me. In network marketing, I actually, I love the concept, but, and some of you guys have probably done it before, but I love the concept, but I didn't actually own anything. I wasn't creating anything really that I owned, a real business. So after 10 years of that, um, I decided to get out. But prior to that, especially my last my last uh, five or six years, they would actually send me around the country to speak and train. And I all of a sudden got a real taste for what it was like to help people get inspired to reach their goals. And I realized I kind of had a knack for talking on stage and helping people and coaching them and mentoring them. And I love that, but I had to find a vehicle uh, to make this all work. Like I had to find a vehicle to be able to help people reach their goals. And so that's kind of how real estate uh, came into play. But at the time I had, um, uh, you know, we had, I have two kids that came from that first marriage who loved them to death, awesome. Went through a divorce, uh, super painful. You've been through a divorce, you know what it's like. It's very, very difficult to go through a divorce. We've managed to navigate ourselves back to being very good friends. 
Matter of fact, we have a birthday dinner tonight for our son, so we all get to go together, which is great. So we, you know, people look at us and say, how do you guys do that? Well, we, we manage to do it. So um, it's important to us to do that for our kids. So very, very painful though. Um, but that was, you know, that's around that time, I guess I'll let Amber tell her story, and then we'll talk how we got together and kind of how we started this real estate empire that has grown <laughs> pretty, pretty rapidly. Yeah, I, I actually grew up in um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas, which I still miss every day. I married a southerner. <laughs> Five people in Texas. <laughs> um, eat some bluebell for me and some Mexican food. Um, but I, I grew up in a very sheltered house. It was a, an extremely religious household, and I wasn't encouraged to really go for much in life. Like even um, continuing my education uh, was not encouraged at all. It was actually discouraged. Um, and it was just kind of, that you were just taught to kind of get by. And so I had a lot of like head trash that I had to get through with even um, wanting to aspire to be more. And uh, when I met Glenn, you know, he definitely opened up my eyes to a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff. But I also started working at a very young age. Um, going back to the education, my parents thought that, that being in even public school was a very um, a bad influence on me. So I was actually taken out after ninth grade and homeschooled. And when I say homeschooled, it wasn't yeah, it tutored wasn't, at all. It wasn't great, it wasn't great homeschooling, <laughs> uh, right? My dad owned his own rubber stamp and engraving company in, in Irving, Texas. And it was get up at five o'clock in the morning, um, drive to the office and do your schoolwork in the back for two hours and then start work at 8.30 and work until whatever time we closed, five, six, seven o'clock, depending on the workload that day. Um, so it, you know, it was, it was not a typical childhood, um, but I, you know, that's what formed me into the person I am today. So I can't say anything bad about it. Um, but I worked for that company for 17 years and for a long time, I really thought that I wanted to take over my dad's business uh, when he retired. But then I, as I got a little bit older, I started realizing what all that entailed. And it was really just working a nine to five job and not getting very far with it. And I just, I just realized that I didn't want the stress that came with owning a small business like that. That's a tough industry too, right? Rubber stamp and engraving, well, yeah. obviously that stuff's going away and it's, you know, everything's moving in different directions. So yeah, I think you saw I, that. I did see that and I, I, just, I just realized that wasn't what I wanted for myself. So I started looking. Um, my dad was an entrepreneur. He did own his own business. So that was also instilled in me. I knew I never wanted to go into corporate America. Nothing against corporate America um, for those of you out there that are in it. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are looking for a way out of that too. Um, and I just, I just knew I didn't want to work for somebody else. I didn't want to be told what to do and when to do it. So uh, I started looking online and that's actually how Glenn and I met because we met through an online ad. Um, he was in the network marketing company yeah. and... Um, I got to tell that story too while we're sitting here because that was pretty, pretty funny as I look back. So, um, you know, I'm in New York and she's in Texas and uh, the first time we met it was, if you know anything about network marketing, you recruit somebody else, you recruit somebody and that's how that goes. Well, I had recruited somebody that was in my area and she placed an ad online and this one hit the ad, right? So landed a big fish on that one, I guess, but she landed and you know- In more ways than one. <laughs> I know, so now we're married, kids, businesses, what happened there? But we're, all of a sudden, you know, I did a, I, help, I was helping my teammate, which I, love, I always love to do. I was helping my person in my business talk to this person in Texas. And as I'm talking, I'm thinking, okay, this one's pretty sharp, you know? And as I'm talking, I'm thinking, wow. So all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, now I'm married, I've got kids and everything, and, and, and Amber and I were, were good friends for two or three years before anything ever happened romantically before we got divorced and that kind of stuff. But, um, but all of a sudden, at four in the morning, randomly, I wake up. That's not like me, I'm a, good, I'm a sound sleeper. I wake up, I go out to my office, which is outside the garage at the time, and I go to my computer and I sit down and there's a lengthy email with a bazillion questions from this one. And I looked and thought, well, isn't that funny? She, she, you know, and when you're, when you're trying to recruit people in network marketing, it's, you see someone that's, that's a hot lead, right? And you think, huh. So that's how we started communicating. I answered all your questions back and we started that, started that friendship. Yep. So that was like back in 2003. 2003. And, and, in, and yeah. at the time, yeah, right. So then we were, we were friends for several years before yep. Anything happened from there, you know. So we were we were friends for two years, but we decided to buy a house together. Right. Right. So we talked to our spouses. We, we even though Amber was in Texas and I was here, we decided to buy a house together, and we knew we were good business partners. Like we knew we we ran that network marketing business. We built a pretty big team, yep. nationwide team, and we we it was a lot over the phone and. We had uh, a lot of success doing that, but it's funny. We're both Type A's, but we have different strengths and weaknesses, so we Definitely. really played well off of each yeah. other. So, anyway, so we built that. We 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 built that business out, and then we decided to buy that first rental property. So we bought that first rental property. We still own that to this day. It was the worst worst investment. <laughs> 
It had everything you're not supposed to do. It was next to railroad tracks, next to a bar called the Bad Pig, on a busy road across from a chemical plant. It was run down. It had been cobbed together by the former owner. There was a junkyard less than a block away we didn't know about. There was a swamp another block away. And this is a sad part of the story. We found out a month after we owned it that an 18-year-old boy hung himself in the garage. So talk about everything wrong with that property. We bought it. But that goes to show, though, we were just so excited to get into real estate. We made a total rookie oh, mistake. Totally. We just, we just, you know, kind of bought the first thing that came along because we didn't have any education behind us yeah. in real estate. So, so fa fast forward a few years, and and we kept working our network marketing businesses, and we ended up both going through divorces. And then, long story short, Amber wound up here in New York, and we ended up um, connecting and started to uh, be romantically involved. And uh, from that, we decided to start flipping houses. Now, I was $80,000 in credit card debt because those network marketing businesses and going through a divorce, that's a tough time. So, you know, she got to marry my debt, lucky her. But, I did not marry him for his money. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even his close, right? Thereof. Yeah, right. Um, so we decided we wanted to flip a house. So we went to a seminar and we, um, you know, we paid a thousand bucks. We drove two and a half hours and went to, the first seminar was a guy kind of mocked you in the, in the audience. He oh, kinda, this was funny. He, so he, yeah, we go to the seminar and the guy doing it, I was, I was sitting on the front row and I think we were going to go to dinner afterwards or something. Yeah. So I was all dressed up. I had my heels on, whatever. And he goes, he goes, if you're going to be a successful real estate investor, you have to go into houses that she'll never go in. And he pointed right at me. I shook my head. Now, I thought to myself, little buddy. Little did he know. Yeah. We <laughs> didn't you know, say a word. about me. But all that did was fuel me. You, yeah. know, re you know, don't let stuff like that piss you off. Just let it let it be fuel to propel you forward. Yeah. So we drove down to a seminar that was in Connecticut. We paid a thousand bucks to get some. I really wanted to have this form that they had. This form to help calculate. the. We give away for free now. But um, there's a form that they had to help calculate the deal. So I really wanted that form. So I paid a thousand bucks for a CD and some things got that form. We came back and flipped our first house. Made about $17,000 profit. Um, and then kind of, you know, everything kind of took off from there for us. Yeah, but even with that one, you know, we put blood, sweat, and tears into that house. We didn't have a lot of education under our belts. We were down to like our last... 1700 bucks. $1,700 of cash, credit, anything. Yeah. I mean, it was, we were in a desperate situation. He was $80,000 in credit card debt, which, and I didn't have any savings or anything. So, yeah. you know, that was, that was a pretty scary moment, but we just went all in. Yeah. And we, you know, we're very grateful for that experience and, and because it's taken us to where we are now. It, it really, um, it, it really put us in a, because of all the debt, we had to try and figure this out. We had no one coaching us. So we actually did all the work ourselves in the first two houses. And the second house actually hurt my back. It's been, it's hurt ever since. That's why I don't do manual labor. We'll teach you how to do it without doing yeah, manual we've, labor. Yeah, we've learned how you actually make more money by not doing the work yourself. Right, And there's, totally. there's reasons for that that we'll go into in, in other podcasts. Yeah. But, you know, then we did our second flip. Yep. That went really well. We sold that. That was when the market tanked. So remember the, if you remember the time, 2007, 2008 was the worst time in history to start a real estate investing business, but that's when we started. And so we didn't know any better. People said, oh, you were brilliant when you started. And I said, no, we were desperate. We just needed to make big chunks of cash legally and didn't know how to do it. We thought real estate investing might be our answer to do that. So we flipped that second house in 33 days and we sold it for about a $33,000 profit and it was, we had a bidding war and it sold for 2,000 over asking. And I'll never, we did all the work ourselves on that one. 31 days, we worked 15 hour days. We busted our hump to get that done. And that changed everything for us. That was a life changing moment when, we, when that, that all now, happened. Now there was something major that happened at that house too though, because I have had my own car since I was 16 years old. Like I said, I started working full, full time when I was 13. So I, and I've bought pretty much everything of my own since I was 13 years old, whether it was food or shampoo or car and insurance and gas and everything. So um, I've had my own car since I was 16. So we ran out of money on that house. Yes. We didn't quite have enough money to finish it. And we, we yeah. didn't, again, we didn't have a lot of education in our belt. So we didn't know that there were all these other sources of, of money that we there didn't, are now. We, we, didn't have, we should say pe to people, because people think, oh, where did you have the money to flip it? We, 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 there was a thing called a no-doc loan. So we were able to borrow money because we had good credit. I could borrow, we could borrow money for the purchase price, and then we use credit cards for the renovation. But we still right. had lingering stuff because we only made seventeen thousand on our first flip, and we're carrying two mortgages because I'm carrying, you know, I've got kids to take care of, all that kind of stuff. So we were low on cash. Right. Is what happened. We were running, we were running low on everything at that second flip. And I had ten thousand dollars equity in my car. Now, for me, you know, an independent young woman, I. For me to sell my car and just completely rely on someone with a new relationship, and we had two kids at the time, yeah, it, that was a huge deal for me. But 
I also saw the bigger picture. So we made that short-term sacrifice. Yeah. And it really has paid off. Happen. So now we're kids, marriage, the whole thing. Yeah, you know, all that story, you know, we did have kind of a dramatic beginning being so oh, yeah. in debt and, and just grinding it out without having any education under our belts. But it does have a happy ending. Um, Glenn and I did end up getting married. Um, when did we get married? 2000. <laughs> just carry on. I'm not sure, but yes, carry on. I don't know uh, the date. Don't ask, don't ask the date. I don't um, know. I'm a guy. I don't know. We got married. <laughs> um, and now we have two kids. Uh, since then, so now we have a total of four kids. Um, I don't consider myself the older kid's stepmother. I don't really care for that term. I call myself their other mother. Um, and I tell them that they may not have grown in my belly, but they grew in my heart. Yeah. So I, I love them all equally. Um, and we we have a great family, like Lynn was saying, we even get together with um, their mom and you know we go to all the kids' sports games together and do all the holidays and get together even even done some together. vacations together which yep. was interesting but we did some vacations yep. together you so. know we make it work people might yeah. think it's weird or whatever but you know it works for our family and yeah. it's the best thing in the world for the kids so all that say, and by the way our son's 20th birthday is today and he actually works for the company yeah. so he's part of our companies he works for our flipping company he works for our um, coaching business and he also and he's going to school part-time uh, to be an entrepreneur that's a, he's an entrepreneur class Yep. At, uh, at a SUNY college here. And that's all voluntary. Like, you know, at 13 years old, I was kind of forced to work for my parents' company, whether I wanted to or not. But yeah. Dakota has um, gone into this very voluntarily. He's yeah. excited about it. So since then, we have flipped about 600 houses and counting. We've got uh, dozens of rental properties. I think we're, we're approaching, we're, we're in the 40s now, probably approaching 50. We have, we're have we starting a new Airbnb section of our business. We're, we've been doing that for a while. So we, we've got a lot of great things that are happening. We own five companies. They're all centered around real estate investing. Signature Home Buyers is our primary company. That's the, we call that, that our foundational company because that's our flipping company. Right. We still do close to 100 deals a year and we're looking to expand that on a more of a nationwide basis. We do a lot of wholesales through there. That's how we buy our rentals. That's how we buy our properties for flipping and all that. So that business is alive and well. We have our, our Amber's a New York State broker. So we have a brokerage business. You don't have to be a broker though. You don't no. have to be an agent to do real estate. We do it because we have so many houses right. that we put through. It just made sense to open our So all these businesses, as your business expands, you have a chance to open more businesses to help your main business. So we have our coaching business, which is Vestapro, and we have um, AIN, local business group that we meet you know, once a month. We have our holding business with all of our companies and there with all of our rental properties. And we have more companies in the works and on and on and on. It's been But been we started crazy. with one. We started with the first one. And, you know, not everybody has those big visions that they want to do even that many. Some people just want to flip one house on the side every year to make an extra 30 or 40 grand, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. So we, we now speak all over Currently, the Northeast, there's plans for next year to be in around the country. We just got the phone today with a deal in Nashville and one in L.A. So we're starting to expand. We're very excited about that, looking forward to it. What makes us really different in our speaking is that, number one, we do it in person. So we don't just hire someone to go out and do it. But as, many, as long as we can do it, we're going to do our own in person. But we, you know, the tech, this, this is a real estate of mind show because we work on the mental side of things, right? We know that if you can't get out of your own way, you'll never be successful. And we're, we're the same way. We have to work on getting out of our own way all the time, but we have head trash just like everybody else does. I don't. I never do a workshop or a speak on stage in front of a thousand people and say, oh, I have it figured out, because I don't. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out every day. Don't ask her, she'll tell you the real truth. But no, but really, she, you know, there's times that she has to slap me around and, and vice versa a little bit and say, come on, you know, shake it off, we're gonna we do this. We hold each other accountable. We do, and so it's important to have that. But that's what we teach people to do is to, we believe so strongly that, there, that the mechanics are not that complicated. You know, it seems complicated because we make it complicated, but really, you know, I tell people, I say, if I, if I told you could buy a house for $5 and put $5 in and sell it and make a $50,000 profit, would you do it? And everybody says, well, yeah. Well, why is it different when it's 50,000 to buy it and 50,000 to renovate it to make a $50,000 profit? It's because we create this massive stress, like, what if I lose that money? What if I get hurt? What if, I, well, when it was $5, you didn't think about it. You know, but when you, when you add more digits to a number, we start to create that fear and these stories and these storybooks we tell ourselves. And so we work on how to overcome that because the mechanics are pretty simple. We buy low, we fix, and we sell high. That's really what we do. Yeah. The, or we rent it or we Airbnb it or whatever we do to make money on the house. Um, we go over all those things that we do. But it's, it's really 20% mechanics and 80% and mindset because with the mindset yeah. to go along with that, 
we like Lemma saying that we all have that head trash, and that head trash is what keeps us where we are at the moment. Because whether you're watching this and you're in a very desperate situation, or whether you're watching this and you're in a comfortable situation, um, you're obviously watching this because you want more. So what is it that's holding you back that's keeping you where you're at? Yeah. And that's what we really focus on is is helping people through that so that they can get to the next level. Again, we again our tagline is that we want to help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing, and we really want that for you. That's really important. Um, we don't most, most people are thinking when they see this when they first start is I don't have the money. That's most people's first reaction. It's the most common thing we get. My answer is always that is the easiest part and we can teach you all that. So the more you spend time with us and we show you all those tips and techniques, you can learn all that part. Um, people might lack motivation. Um, they may think that they want to do all the work themselves. That's what we thought when we started that yeah. we had to do all the work ourselves, but we've it we've quickly came to the conclusion that you actually make more money by hiring the workout and we teach all of that. Yeah. So I want to give you some tips. I got some notes I want to make sure I cover with you guys today in the calls. We're getting wrapping up here. So here's some beginner tips on how you can get started and things we think are really important when you're out there. First off, you want to have a mentor. I think it's so important that you have a mentor that you can talk to and someone that's been down the road before you. Um, if you ever choose to you know, work with us, that'd be great, we'd love to, but have somebody that knows what they're talking about. I always say, be careful who you take advice from because you might wind up just like them. So if someone's giving you advice- my One of my favorite quotes. So if someone is, is ever, if someone is ever out there giving you advice and you look at their life and think, so you drive a, 19, a 20 year old car, you live in, a, you live in a, an apartment, you, know, you don't seem to have any money, you're not really happy all the time, and, you know, and you're giving me advice, do I really want that? Look closely at what they have because if they're giving you advice, that's the path, that's all they know. And sometimes they think they're helping you by giving you this advice and telling you don't do something because yeah. you know they're protecting you or whatever. But again, yeah. if you look at their situation, do they have what you want? Because yeah. you want to listen to someone that does have what you want. And success leaves clues. Yeah. And then the other thing I would say is get educated. You know, immerse yourself in the industry. Pick up whatever education you have because when we started, we didn't really have much of education. We went to that one little seminar, but it, yeah. we had got a form from it. But we made a lot of mistakes along the way that had we spent a little more time getting educated, it would have shaved so many months and dollars off of the learning curve. I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. that, that we could have saved had we um, had a mentor and, and gotten that education. The next thing I want to tell you is to take action in spite of fear. So even though you're scared, take action. That's the hardest thing. Again, I told you that the mental part is really, really crucial. And so you want to make sure that you take action in spite of fear. Um, when you start anything new, there's always going to be you know, fear and you have trepidation and you're just not sure. And that makes us all scared. And so the secret to success, and we can't dive into it deep here, we will in future, in future podcasts, but you really have to dive forward and say, I will do this even though I'm scared to death. I'm going to take my next step and my next step. If you just focus on the next step and the next step and don't think about step 322 when you're on step two. Just think about the next step and take one step forward and that's going to make your journey so much easier than if you focus on all the things that might come because guess what? They're going to come. You're going to have problems. This is Just because you're a real estate investor doesn't mean all of a sudden the problems go away. You're going to have more problems. But the outcome can be so much greater when you take a, you know, a, a, a calculated risk like real estate investing. And then get to know your market. You know, you don't have to know the entire United States market. Just get to know your area. And whenever you, you knowledge, whenever you gain that knowledge, that makes fear go away. So by getting to know your market, that's like super helpful. Yeah. So let's go ahead and recap a little bit. So you, again, you want to have a mentor. That's going to be important. You want to get educated, immerse yourself in the industry, um, you know, take action in spite of fear. And then of course you want to uh, make sure that you got to get to know your market. That's, uh, that's important. So, yep. um, so this is just the beginning. This is episode one, you guys, we hope you enjoyed today. And, uh, we're going to go into a lot of great details going forward on, on all the details of what we do, how we accomplish these things. We're going to give you some tips, techniques, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to have interview. We're going to interview a lot of leaders. I've talked to a lot of people that want to be on our show. We, we've been fortunate to start to be on a lot of people's podcasts. So uh, one of the things we say is, hey, will you be on ours? And we've, we've had a lot of great people that uh, we'll be doing that with. So it's, uh, it's awesome. Yep. So you've been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. So if you found value on this podcast, please leave a message in iTunes or, or share it with anybody that you think would um, enjoy it. 
And make sure that you look us up on social media. You can find us at Glenn, that has two N's on it, G-L-E-N-N, -N, and Amber Schwarm, S-C-H-W-O-R-M. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're here on YouTube. Um, and, you know, let's, let us help you create wealth through real estate. Yep. We're going to help a lot of people. Will you be next? We'll see you in the next show.